And welcome everybody to this week's exciting episode. Woo-hoo! Always an exciting one with Paranormality UK. Always entertaining. Always entertaining. And uh, well, this well last week you uh, went full on war on the Scientologists. <laughs> yes, I did. So this week I'm going to pick on Russia. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Naturally. I mean, yeah, straight from Scientology. As you do. So, I mean, what strange things can we think about Russia? Ooh. They tried boring a hole to the centre of the Earth? They did, did they? They did, yeah. I think they they did get, like, a few kilometres down. They picked a, a, a part of their country where the crust was particularly thin. <laughs> right. And they wanted to drill through the crust to the mantle. Oh. And I think they did get, like, maybe three, four, I don't know, whether it was five or six kilometres down until, like, the pressure and the heat that far inside the earth was just literally mincing their drill bits. Fair enough. So well, that, that's they just one... gave up and put a cap on it and said, right, well, that is enough. We will go on now. <laughs> well, that's one thing me and the Russians have in common is a thin crust because that's how I like my pizza. Okay, so, fair enough. Yeah. Well, there's an, another little tidbit about Josh for you. All. Yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, so crazy Russian stuff. Mm. Well, one thing I know about the crazy... Well, I don't know if it is the actual Russians doing it, but there seems to be a lot of perfectly circular holes in Siberia or on the outskirts of Russia in right. forests and things. Okay. And there's hundreds of them, and nobody knows how they got there, what or they're doing. Or created them or anything. Like nothing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I that remember seeing pictures yeah. of that. Maybe we should cover that on a podcast. Yeah. Oh, and so the... we just did. <laughs> <laughs> That's all there is to know about it. Yeah, there we go. That's the Russian yeah. episode over. <laughs> and the fact that a lot of them train with bears and have bears as like pets and things they... yeah yeah they actually no you're not wrong there they actually yeah. do don't they which yeah. is pretty nuts when you think about that it is yeah so but that's pretty much all i know about russia mate that's fair enough mate well there was there was actually a, like, a particular thing that i was going to cover today yeah I, I am going to cover today i haven't given up on it mm-hmm. i'm still doing it um now, recently, there's been... Is it a film about... Uh, what's his name? Oppenheimer? The yes. inventor of the nuclear bomb? Yeah, with Cillian Murphy. Yeah. Now, I'm not covering Oppenheimer. Mm-hmm. Because that's not paranormal. <laughs> no. <laughs> but I am covering possibly the biggest unexplained explosion ever recorded. Ah. And it happened in Russia. Oh, nice. In 1908... Yeah. Uh, in Siberia. So, I mean, the thing is, no one really noticed this uh, explosion at the time. And when you (laughs) take into account the sheer size of Russia, I mean, Mm. let's face like Russia is the biggest country in the world. Yeah. It wraps almost halfway around the the Northern Hemisphere. Yeah. Mm. When the sun comes up in Vladivostok on the east side of the country... People haven't even gone to bed in St. Petersburg on the west side of the country. That's how big it is. Damn. This, we are mind-bogglingly big. I didn't know that. No? No, that's... Yeah, that's quite impressive. It, it, it is very impressive. I mean, that's a hell of a country. It's massive. Mind-bogglingly big. You can't even imagine it. I mean, if you were to play a game of global hide-and-seek, you could do worse than hiding in Russia. Yeah. You know? No one's going to find you there. If you want to yeah. go off the map... Easy, particularly Siberia. Siberia is, I think it takes up something like two thirds of Russia. Mm, damn. Okay. If, if it was a country, its own individual country on its own, legally separated from Russia, it would itself be the biggest country in the world, Siberia on its own. Wow. It's massive. <laughs> and a third of it is covered in a forest called the Tiger Forest. I've only just connected the dots of Siberian tigers. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I assume they're from Siberia. It's not spelt the same. The tiger forest is T-A-I-G-A, tiger. Ah, okay. Yeah. But, yeah, it is where the tigers live, mm. I guess, Siberian tigers, yeah. And, <clears throat> excuse me, on the 30th of June, 1908, Siberia had a massive explosion. No one noticed. Hardly anyone noticed Okay, a few people noticed, but mostly it went undiscovered for a a little while until people actually came across the wreckage that had happened there because no one actually witnessed this explosion, Mm. Um, directly at least. 
and, and it wasn't until like people mapping the area or whatever came across a whole lot uh, like of flattened trees, and all these flat trees were flattened all in the same direction. Every single one of them. Yeah, all of them, line after line after line of them, just all flattened, same direction. And when they actually, I, I guess they went up in the air and they took aerial shots of it or whatever. Um, well, no, they wouldn't have done in 1908 because aeroplanes were very, very short, <laughs> only just been invented. Um, but, yeah, they, they realised when they sort of started covering this area that the trees hadn't all f- fallen in the same direction. They'd fallen expanding outwards from a central point, mm, like okay. like a blast, yeah? So an explosive blast would do that, you know? The, the, the trees on the east side would blow to the east and the trees on the west side would fall over to the west, you know, and from the central point. Silly question. Yeah. Had nukes and things been invented at this time? Nah, this is the link to Oppenheimer, you see. Now, this event, a lot of people have asked, was it a nuclear explosion? Hmm. But I would like to remind you of the date was 1908. My granddad wasn't even born then. It's nearly 40 years before the invention of the nuclear bomb. 40 years before. You think about it, hmm. uh, the bomb that fell on Hiroshima was called the Little Boy. Mm-hmm. And that was <laughs> dropped in 1940. Yeah. You always laugh at that one. Yeah, because it's such a big explosion and they called it Little Boy, which is... Well, the one on Nagasaki was called the Fat Man. So <laughs> yes. They had a third lined up called Rufus, but that one never got dropped. Rufus? Yeah. I don't understand where the logic is there. Nor do I, but that, 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 that's, that's the American nuclear program. And that's not what this is about, right? I have put on my notes, in capital letters, not Oppenheimer. Okay, it so was rule that Definitely out. not him. It wasn't a nuclear explosion. Okay. Um, but, yeah, th- this explosion happened. So, like I say, uh, nuclear weapons, not an option. Mm-hmm. Um, other theories? Can you have any other guesses? I want to say possible earthquake. Earthquake is a good guess. But then to be central doesn't really make sense. No, no, it it wasn't an earthquake. Was there earthquakes afterwards, like a rippling effect? Yes, there were. There There were were. reports of seismic activity Mm. from many countries around the world. That's how big this explosion was. Okay. Okay. So it wasn't a volcano. It wasn't any kind of man-made explosive. This thing was mm. uh, around about 2,000 times the Hiroshima bomb, the the little boy bomb that exploded in Hiroshima. This yeah. was 2,000 times bigger. It took out 80 million trees, nearly 1,000 a a square miles of forest was absolutely flattened to the ground. That's a lot of damage. Yeah. And no one noticed that. Well, a couple of, a few people living fairly near would have noticed mm. it, which I'll cover a little bit later on. Um, but yeah, nobody actually witnessed what it was that caused it. My brain also, is, it might be far-fetched, could a sinkhole... A sinkhole? Yeah. I've never known a sinkhole to cause an explosion flatten trees. Oh, Suck them in the ground. Yeah, I'm but... just... My brain is just focusing on that central point. That central point. point. Yeah. That central point, even to this day, no longer grows trees. It's just a bear what? patch in the middle of the forest. Yeah, yeah. So that would suggest nuclear to it, me. Maybe, oh, no, actually, because forest and stuff grows after. Uh, was it yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Chernobyl? Then? Chernobyl, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm stumped on this one. But that, that forest has turned red as well, by the way. Uh, has it really? Chernobyl, yeah, yeah. I bet that looks cool, so, though. Yeah. Red forest. Oh, didn't they also... Oh, no, I'm going to get sidetracked. I'll shut up. Okay. <laughs> right, so I was explaining this one to my girlfriend, Haley yesterday. Explained the, the whole mystery of it. Mm-hmm. And I, I said, you know, not a volcano, not explosives, not an earthquake, not Oppenheimer. Not a sinkhole. She went, Aliens. Ah, oh, yeah, I hadn't even thought about aliens. Aliens, could it be? Hmm. But then, 
what would aliens have to do with 18 million trees? In well, they, did, they just flattened them. It'd be a blooming big ship yeah. to flatten a thousand square miles of trees. We're talking like Star Destroyer size there. The Death Star, I think, is <laughs> yeah. literally colliding. So yeah. I'm going to no, close that one off right now. I, I'm pretty much certain it wasn't aliens. Mm. Okay? Okay. Now, the one guy, a Soviet mineralogist called Leonard Kulik, he was thinking about this. What, what could it be? And his best guess was a meteor. Mm. Makes sense. It does. Meteor crashes in. You know, you get that... Uh, uh, that explosive effect, uh, the shock wave going out, blowing down the trees. It's a good solid theory. So, go, no, go on. You're, you're looking at me like that. Go I'm on. gonna. I, I, my brain is kind of working a little bit like yours now, probably because we've spent so much time doing podcasts. Yeah. So now I've just had a pirate thought. If it was a meteorite, surely. For a thousand square miles, miles, yeah, that kind of meteorite would have what a similar effect to what happened to the dinosaurs. No, no, no. Oh. Um, but I can see what you mean there. Well, I, w- I would think that it would have more of an effect than just. I say just like eighty million trees is a lot, but I would have thought if it was a meteorite, people would have noticed, or they. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. It's weird. Right. Well, let's 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 dive into this because Leonard Kulik, he he was convinced that it was a meteorite, mm-hmm. and I think he probably saw. Oh, it wouldn't be dollar signs; it would be ruble signs, because <laughs> <laughs> uh, obviously, pieces of meteorite are worth more than their weight in gold. Mm. Quite yeah. often, you know, you sell it to the right place, you, you can pick up a lot of cash. So he put together. A bunch of scientists and and and, and whatnot, and, and got some local guides, sherpas or whatever, uh, and they they all went to the centre of this crash site or this this explosion site. They followed the direction of the trees to the middle of it, and well, if it was a meteor, so particularly a meteor that's literally levelled a thousand square miles of trees, you would expect there to be quite a big crater. In the middle there, wouldn't you? Yes. And I've also, as you've said that, I've just thought of something else. Wouldn't the circle be, like, burnt? Charred? Yes. Well, that is the thing. Like, towards the centre, obviously, towards the outside, the trees were just blown over. They were still fairly intact. But as you got closer to the centre, he was thinking, money's in my money's in my bag here, because the trees were getting burnt, showing, you know, signs oh, okay. of charring and charcoal and, and all that sort of thing. And he was thinking, brilliant, you know, I've definitely got a meteor here. Got to the centre, no crater. What? No crater at all. In fact, it gets even stranger. Because rather than there being a hole in the ground, there were still upright trees. In the centre? Right in the very centre. They, they they didn't have any branches or bark. They'd been completely stripped and charred and, and blackened. But they were still stood upright. Just a little group of trees stood upright in the middle of a completely flattened forest. Is this a good mystery? It's a very good mystery. And my brain is trying to play detective here, and I'm stumped. You've oh, drawn a blank. It? Yeah. So if it wasn't a crater in the middle, was it like a flat kind of circle then? Yeah, basically, yeah. No, the, okay. the ground didn't... The, the topography of the ground hadn't changed. It obviously wasn't Damn. perfectly flat and level, but, I mean, yeah, uh, ground zero was literally just a little group of trees and all the other trees were just spreading out from that, flattened, obviously charred and blackened, burned, and then as you walked hmm. further out, miles and mile after mile out, the, the trees were in a better state, but they had all been sort of collapsed. See, I'm now starting to agree with Haley. I'm now starting to think you, alien. Oh, you, you're going on Team Alien. I'm thinking alien. Really? Yeah. Okay. Um, fair enough. Oh. Well, as I said, there's just some some more facts for you, right? Um, 
Seismic events were recorded all over Europe. Uh, it looked like from the seismographs that it was just a mid-size earthquake. But obviously, earthquakes don't flatten trees quite so uniformly, at least. Mm, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and also, uh, an air-based shock wave was detected in Papua New Guinea and Washington, D.C., over 5,000 miles away. They both registered this air-based shock wave. I mean, that's not even <laughs> travelling through the grain. That's, that's the actual atmosphere. Yeah. Oh, man. This and is... this shock wave reached 5,000 miles. So that's a hell of an explosion. This is an onion of a mystery, just layers upon layers. Layers and layers, yeah. So now you asked about anybody who might have seen it. Mm. Yes, there were people who saw it. The estimated... De actually, I'm going to cover this up now. Have a guess how many people you think an explosion that leveled trees of a 1,000 square miles would kill. Kill? Yeah, the estimated death toll. What do you reckon that would have been? Well, if if not many people saw it and knew about it, I would... My brain goes 12. You're not far off. The okay. estimated death toll is three. Three. That is how unpopulated Siberia is. Wow. Is that <laughs> in a thousand square miles, it's supposed that possibly three people died. Wow. <laughs> that is... Uh... And those who lived close by did see something. All right. So allegedly, the night sky was illuminated for actual like several days with this eerie light. People mm. said that they could actually, on the day of the 30th of June, or on the night of the 30th of June, um, people said that they could actually read their newspaper. They could sit outside and read their newspaper at night. It was so bright was this light in the sky. Um, and it, it was like a second sun, moving very mm. slowly towards the horizon over... I don't know, 10, 20 minutes, something like that. You know, 5, 10, maybe 15, 20 minutes. So and then, yeah, go on, sorry. Uh, as it moved closer to the horizon, they said the, the, the whole sky just lit up as though it was on fire. And then, a couple of minutes after that, they heard noises and it sounded like gunshots, fire, like uh, artillery fire. Like many, many guns, you know, yeah. almost like they were in a war zone. And following that was the shock wave that obviously flattened the trees. It leveled some buildings. It blew out windows, shattered glass in the windows, and even knocked people off their feet and unconscious. The few people that witnessed this event. So, right, it's got to be an alien death ray, right? I don't know about death ray, but aliens, I don't know. The only other thing that comes to mind, which it makes no sense, because World War One hadn't even happened in 1908. Nope. So my brain just thought then, oh, maybe they were testing weapons of some degree, but then there was no war no, at, the, at all. Uh, no, the, the, the nuclear program hadn't even got underway yet. So, um, yeah, no, there definitely wasn't. Not that kind of nuclear test. Not, not. There were definitely no nuclear bombs that were yeah. two thousand times the size of the Hiroshima bomb, like the the little boy. There's, there's not. There was nothing no. on Earth that could create an explosion that powerful. You've baffled me with the trees in the middle, as well as five thousand miles away. They felt the. Was it the atmosphere? The yeah. I don't know. I have okay. no idea, man. You no this idea? Crazy. Right. Okay. Uh, all right. So the, the trees in the middle, mm -hmm. I'm going to let you in on a, a, an experiment, I guess, that was carried out in Australia, I mm. believe, by the American military called Operation Blowdown. <laughs> right. And this was held in North Queensland in 1963. So... Yeah, obviously years and years yeah, yeah. after the event, but this may go some way to actually explaining why uh, why those trees were still up in the middle. You see, yeah. what they did 
was they carried out explosive tests over the forest canopy. And because they, they were trying to find out how effective bombs were in a jungle environment. Possibly, this being 1963, they were wanting, you know, or that, that would have, there would have been Vietnam War involvement. Or, you know, mm. it, you know, it might have yeah. been testing for that kind of environment. I don't know. No, nothing confirmed on that. But um, what they were doing was they were detonating TNT bombs, not nuclear, but j- just regular bombs, around about 20 metres above the canopy of the forest in northern Queensland. Okay. And the explosive effect was almost identical to what was happening in Tunguska, mm. as in okay. the trees directly underneath the explosion were still upright, but as the explosion came down and moved outwards, all the other trees were flattened, and there was Makes still sense. just this small circle of trees in the middle. So uh, now we're getting yeah. somewhere. It has to be an aerial explosion. Okay. Yeah? I think I've got it. But I'd, I'd want you to carry on because if I have got it, then it derails the podcast. So. Well, I think if you, if you if you haven't guessed it by now, particularly as this is my episode and I am the big space guy. Yeah. It's it's a meteor. Yeah. It's a meteor. All right. Okay. So there was no impact crater because the impact didn't happen. Mm-hmm. The meteor would have entered the Earth's atmosphere. And this is what's known as an air burst. Is as as it's traveling through the atmosphere. Obviously, it's heating up. It's got friction. When it's traveling at what sixty thousand miles an hour, maybe more. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it, yeah. It may travel through the atmosphere for several minutes, but obviously, it's heating up all the time, and eventually, it just explodes. And this is why the people heard artillery fire because ah. there's so many explosions it was broken up into smaller pieces those smaller pieces would have exploded as well mm. and that's why there's no impact crater and not really any evidence of a meteor left because it would have been scattered over such a wide area yeah that, it, that, it, that that's that's what happened i mean when you think about it it's the most obvious thing. They say that there are around 20 impacts or, or 20 meteors per day enter the Earth's atmosphere. Still to this day? Yeah, all the time, every day. But mm. most of them are so small, they burn up before we, they not, don't even turn into shooting star. Well, that's what a shooting star is. It's a burning meteor? Yeah, it's a meteor just burning up in the atmosphere. That's what a shooting star is. It's not an actual star travelling across the sky. It's, it's oh. just a, yeah, a bit of asteroid or a bit of rock or ice or something like that. Uh, only 5 to 10% of meteors actually hit the ground. Ah, okay. And I imagine by the time they do hit the ground, they are tiny. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, a lot of them don't even make craters because they've lost so much speed and so much of their mass by the time they actually hit the ground. They, they don't really do that much damage. So the ones that the the meteorite that killed the dinosaurs must have been a huge meteorite. Oh, yes, it would have been kilometers across. Wow. Okay, that kind of puts things in perspective. Yeah. So when you think about it. This bomb, this airburst, this meteor, would have detonated itself. It would have heated up and just exploded, probably around about five miles. They mm. estimate around about five miles above the, the surface of the Earth. Okay. Which, again, obviously the size of this explosion, it would have had to be in such a finely tuned like mm. meteorite, everything must have come together just right. It's speed through space. It's you know because the angular momentum of as a meteorite is basically heading for the sun. It's just the Earth kind of gets in the way, and as the meteor enters what we call the sphere of influence, when it where where gravity starts to take effect on it, it would have curled in. So even though it might have been heading for the sun at 60,000 miles an hour, it wouldn't necessarily have hit the earth at that speed because it would have curled around. Or, you know, but there's a, there's a lot of maths involved in that kind of thing. I've got a quick question for Go you for it, while, yeah. while we're on this subject. You're the space guy. So does that mean other planets in our atmosphere 
have more <laughs> in our in our, in our, system. In, our system, <laughs> in our galaxy, whatever you would call it. Would they have more meteorites yeah. and more craters? Uh, like, not necessarily craters, um, but yes, um, planets with atmos like if you start uh, uh, closest to the sun, Mercury basically has no atmosphere, mm -hmm. just like the moon. Anything that hits it, gonna create a creator. Yeah, yeah, because it's got no atmosphere to slow it down. It's you know, it, it's whatever impacts is gonna create a create a crater. Venus has a very very thick atmosphere. They say that standing on the surface of Venus is the same as being a kilometre underwater here on Earth. Oh, the, wow. The, the atmospheric pressure is that much. It's that dense. Oh, uh, okay. So any meteors heading for Venus probably aren't even going to get anywhere near the surface because they'll just burn up in the atmosphere. Mm. Plus the atmosphere is so hot as well. Air is like 800 degrees or something like that at surface level. So it would be like putting a rock into a furnace at the same time as it getting friction and whatnot. Then you've got the moon, obviously, around Earth. You see craters on the moon all the time. It's got no mm. atmosphere again to yeah. slow things down. Jupiter, I missed Mars, but that doesn't matter. All right, Jupiter is so big, it attracts lots and lots of meteors. And it's kind of like our guardian angel, if you like, Jupiter is. Because of ah, its size, okay. it's got such large amount of gravity that it attracts... A lot of the like planet kill it, what would kill us here on Earth, Jupiter collides with them, we don't get bothered. I suppose Jupiter is so big, it can yeah. just take it. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, that's cool. That's interesting. No, I just wanted to know for reference. No, oh, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. But <clears throat> yeah, like I say, so here on Earth, only about 5 to 10% of meteors ever hit the ground. They've mm -hmm. got to be big enough. Traveling fast enough, or you know, whatever. Yeah. So when you think about it, this had to tick so many boxes. This meteor to be just the right size to air burst to not hit the ground, mm. but to create that level of devastation. Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't have been far off a meteor that probably would have created a crater. It's kind of similar. Do you remember a few years ago where <clears throat> it was actually? filmed on people's dash cams in Russia where that meteor came and exploded in the air. Yeah. And that was like putting people's windows out and, you know, like people were getting glass mm. in their face from watching it. You, you yeah, know. that lit up the sky as well. Exactly, the same sort of shockwave, only that meteor was possibly only like 10, 20% the size of the one that actually went down in Tunguska. Damn. So that's quite scary to think as well. If that was bigger... That could have actually had a lot more impact. It would have been a city killer. Yeah. Oh, crazy. I mean, if that had happened in any major city around Earth, mm. New York, London, Paris, Sydney, you know, anywhere, you know, major cities, that city would have just been gone. There'd be nothing left of it. And the ripple effects afterwards would have... Exactly, yeah. Oh, man. So, I mean, luckily, this meteor... Came down in the middle of nowhere, mm. thousands yeah. of miles from any kind of civilization. It's, it's very lucky that Russia is that big mm. that it could take that explosion, and like I say, hardly anyone noticed. Yeah, yeah, those poor three people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what are the chances of that, man? Yeah, possibly a few bears and that as well. I don't know. Um, there was. <clears throat> Another guy, I've got to put this into, into the, the podcast just because I think it's funny. Uh, a, a German astrophysicist in 2002 called, uh, <laughs> I'm not swearing here, his name was Wolfgang Kunt. Oh, wow. Right. Okay. <laughs> and, and that is spelled K-U-N-D-T. All right, so I'm not, I'm oh, not wow. swearing. Um, he proposed it was an Earth fart, right, <laughs> right <laughs> which is okay. basically... Tens of millions of tons of natural gas all surfacing and f for whatever reason igniting when it hits the surface. Which I can see why he come up with this theory because similar things have happened, but generally right. they're in volcanic areas. So earth farts are a thing? Well, we have natural gas under the earth, yeah. Sometimes it makes its way up and it escapes. But... 
<laughs> a lot of the time it doesn't explode because yeah. that would only happen in a, a somewhere where it's got a point of ignition, like in a volcanic zone, which is obviously mm. going to be where gas is close to the surface anyway. So that's how yeah. these things happen. But in the middle of Siberia, there's no volcanoes anywhere near that. Yeah, you're, you're, okay. you're, you're thousands of miles from any kind of tectonic plate or any, you know, anything like that. Mm. So, I I just think this whole Earth fart theory is is just funny. <laughs> That's why. That's I, what I was thinking when you said it. I was, is there surely there's not a way the Earth can just produce a fart and if it's whether it's it, a it, thin crust or not. Yeah, it can produce the fart, but igniting it and creating that kind of explosion to mm. knock trees outwards. Yeah, from an epicenter is is unlikely, mm. and I think the 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 Operation Blowdown, the experiment in Queensland, Australia, explains that what they found there yeah. quite well, and it also explains the fact that you know that there's not a hell of a lot of um, debris or uh, you know there's no mm. meteorites to find there, although there was. Uh, evidence uh, i think in the 1990s when some scientists went out there and took like measurements and samples they found um elevated levels of like nickel and cobalt and stuff like that which oh, found in wow. asteroids yeah and this th these elements had been absorbed by the trees so there there, there is more evidence there about the meteorite theory. so you had like metal trees uh n no it would have uh, the metal would have been um uh, uh, uh annihilated basically powderized oh okay soaked into the ground and the trees would have absorbed that through the water oh right i thought we, i thought you meant no, they were they weren't yeah. metal trees but there were trace <laughs> elements of the metals found within the trees mm. that possibly absorbed it from a meteor now now this is uh, there's one last little theory that i'd like to share with you and that is called an Earth grazer. This is another meteorite. Now, do you remember I said that it's, it's all down to angular momentum mm. um, as to how fast uh, th this meteor is going to approach? Well, we quite often f have almost earth grazers on a regular basis. I, I, I almost, uh, you know, twice a year you'll hear it on the news, oh, there's a meteor that's going to pass between us and the moon at 50,000 miles or whatever like that. Yeah. Now, when you think about it, the, the atmosphere... Although we we think about it only extending for about a hundred kilometers up from the surface, it obviously gradually eases out. You know, the further out you go, there's still going to be trace amounts of gas there. Yeah. Um, and what can happen is meteors that pa that pass that close to the to the planet, um, if they haven't. The, the, the Earth hasn't quite got enough gravitational grip on it. The 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 asteroid or meteor will hit the um, the atmosphere, and then it will kind of get reflected off. Oh, okay. It kind of bounces off the atmosphere. Hmm. Um, which obviously th this is, this is something that astronauts have to train for as well. I remember. Uh, do you remember in the film Apollo thirteen, mm. they had to change their trajectory because they were drifted. And if they were, if they if they didn't change their trajectory, they were just going to bounce off the atmosphere and they'd be stuck in space forever. Well, that's the same thing that happens with some of these asteroids. They can graze the atmosphere, not quite hit the ground, and get reflected off back into space, but it still might have exploded from the friction. You know, it would have detonated. You know, five ten. It might have been even higher than the the the, the, the estimated five miles above. The surface it might it might have been 20 30 miles above the surface it, if it was of a su sufficient size it still mm. would have created that blast you know and yeah. left no evidence yes so there we go i like it my, and that's my theory on tunguska it's a very it's a mystery that's baffled scientists for decades but that is the most plausible explanation that i can think of that isn't aliens. I wish it was for aliens. once. <laughs> when when you said aliens, I thought there was a huge mothership, <coughs> and it almost done like a laser, like in a circle, mm -hmm. if you know what I mean. Because 
when you said about the trees in the middle, I was like, that's, that's the only logical explanation. Is aliens? That's where the there. tripod was, where they landed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but no, I suppose if um, the Australians done that experiment in '63, yeah, and it was near enough exactly the same results. Exactly, and I believe that uh, scientists have been out to the area with Geiger counters to measure. Mm -hmm you know, whether there was radiation and there's nothing no, above normal sort of background. I know there's plenty of areas in Russia that are virtually deadly to go into within, like, hours because they've done so much nuclear testing. Like, mm. obviously, uh, between the United States and the Russians, they've let off more nuclear bombs than, you know, all the other countries combined. Yeah. And they got to test them somewhere. So, I mean, obviously, there are areas of probably Siberia, you know, middle of nowhere, where if you were to go there for even just a couple of hours, you'd probably receive lethal doses of radiation. This is not one of those places, yeah. by all accounts, you know. So the meteor is just like literally the only thing that I can think of. And a lot of scientists concur with that as well. It is the most plausible, the most believed in explanation, is that yeah. it was an airburst or an earth grazer that exploded and detonated. I would be worried if it wasn't a meteorite, if that makes sense. Because now that you've said it, that does make logical sense. Yeah. If that was still like a, if they didn't do the experiment, and to this day they were like, we don't have any clue as to what that could have been, that would be scarier to me. But I think it would be it would rate a, a hell of a lot higher than on the paranormality <laughs> rating than what I'm thinking at the moment. Yeah, I mean, is it still technically like that? That's just what they. Assume so they're like ninety nine yes, yeah, percent sure. Yeah, oh, th yeah. There's always room for error, aren't there? Isn't mm. there? So, but that is the most widely accepted theory to yeah. today. Yeah. Um, but I mean, if it's not that, I, I, I'm, I'm out of options. You know what? That's just reminded me of as well. That one that you covered with the avalanche. They still don't know. Oh right, yeah, yeah. The the, the Atlov Pass. Yeah, yeah. And they're still not sure about what that was, but then. A lot of people are like, oh, it could be an avalanche. Again, well, I mean, this this might explain that one as well. Because that, that was Russia, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Russia. Wow, very interesting, mate. Yeah. That's a very good one. So as we... Um, I, I, uh, if we're putting this to the paranormality uh, scale... Yeah. Do we rate the believability of it being a meteor, or do we... Rate it based on its mysteriousness? I mean, how, how, how do you propose we do this? I mean, the scale, it, it depends on what we're covering. <laughs> I, I, would, I would say I'm rating it as a meteor. Yeah. And I'd say I'm 8.5 out of 10% <laughs> oh. sure that it is a meteor. There's always obviously mm. a room for maybe I'm wrong. So I'm putting about 1.5 on that. Maybe I'm wrong, but I, I'd say about 8.5 that I'm sure that I'm at 8.5. Yeah. Sure that it's a meteor. I mean, I can't now. I can't unsee anything else. I can't think about anything other than a meteorite or aliens. Or I'd love it to be aliens, but I don't. I'd, in this case, I just don't think it is. No. I'd love it are. to be, but it's not. I think you are right. It's definitely a meteorite. Um, yeah, I'll join you. I'll give it an 8.5 as well. Yeah? Yeah. Just to kind of give that little bit of mystery. I, I think there's still, there is still room for some, mm. you know, some things that could still be explained. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that, that is the the most widely expect, accepted theory and the most obvious one to me. It just, mm. it, it's got a lot of logic to it, you know? Yeah, even even if it is a meteorite, it's still very fascinating at the fact that the way the science came together on that with the trees in the middle, the circular, yeah. all eighty million of them in the same direction, like it's yeah, it's still very fascinating. Oh. I don't think there's anything else like that on Earth, is there, where you can go and see that? No, not that I know of. I mean, I heard about this several years ago, and it's mm. just fascinated me ever since. And yeah. Um, yeah, the other day when I started my research, I, I was just, I just kind of went down a rabbit hole on it. Mm. You know, and I was just oh, easily done, isn't it? Yeah, go down a rabbit. Particularly from that first, from that first page where I'm like, well, it could be a volcano, it could be explosives, it could be earthquake. Mm. Was it Oppenheimer? No. Yeah, it wasn't. Even though you know, there's a film out about him at the moment. 
I, you know, I can't, yeah. can't blame it on him. I've noticed you haven't referred to the sinkhole again. Is that because it's stupid? Uh, or? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, I, I don't understand how that one would work. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> we can all hope. <laughs> But anyway, that 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 is my case, the Tunguska effect uh, event. Uh, look into it yourself if you if you at home have got some any better theories. Mm. Um, although, if you have, I'd like to hear it. Yeah. And if if you if if you are a meteor, write in. <laughs> yeah. If you've seen one. If you've seen one. If you've had problems with meteors. If you uh, if you. If one of your houses got flat, flattened by a meteor, mm. write to us. We'll have a whip round. We'll help you out. Yeah. If one of your family members was of the three people that were affected by this. R.I.P. R.I.P. and write in. Let us yeah. know. And until then, I've been Pyrus. I'm Josh. This has been Paranormality UK. Ta-ta. Ta-ta.